Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about orc culture as we get into the mechs and docks. Um, now these are two different castes within orcoid society. Yesterday we had a video on the Weird Boy cast, so check that out if you haven't, or after the video, check that out. Um, but today we're going to be talking about the mechs and docks. Now, if you guys have any other suggestions for topic ideas, uh, please comment down below. We read the comments every single day, and based on your comments, we derive our video topics. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe, because we post Warhammer 40k content every single day. Uh, with that said, uh, this video is going to be a little different. It's not your traditional 40 facts. Instead, we're going to be reading the reports uh, provided by Genitor Lucas Anzion of the AdMech. Uh, he wrote his explanation on the skill acquisition within the orc cast and professional social structure. Basically, it means how is it that a doc just has the innate ability to implant um, orcs with cybernetic bo uh, body parts. Uh, same thing with mechs. How is it that a mech doesn't need any type of training? He just instantly knows how to create a battle wagon a, uh, or a truck. Uh, and then finally, towards the end, we're going to explore a little more on the idea of why is it that when orcs paint something a certain color um, it becomes uh, a lot stronger for instance if an orc paints a truck red why is it that that truck that truck runs faster uh, but with that said let's get into 40 facts about the mech and the dock it has long been known that the psychological aspect of a human is in part determined by their genetic heritage Certain genotypes are disposed towards predetermined personality traits, which in turn inform the process of learning and aptitude. In orcs, this genetic predetermination is also present, though in a different and even more pronounced fashion. It appears that not only is aptitude toward certain aspects of the culture present in the gene structure, actual skills and knowledge are also encoded in these genetic strands. The best analogy one can think of is to compare this knowledge with the basic motor skills present in a human child. A human child does not have to be taught how to breathe, how to make his heart beat, or how to employ the many thousands of other biological functions that are already operating at the time of his birth. In a similar way, an orc predisposed towards science and mechanics has an encoded knowledge for basic physics and mechanical engineering theory. However, this knowledge is as subconscious as the baby's ability to breathe. It is an unconscious competence in whatever field the individual is created for. In the same way that a child can learn to alter their breathing, hold their breath, or through exercise improve the capacity of their lungs and vascular system, so too can an orc build up these innate skills through the normal process of learning. The two major skill groups created in this fashion are the castes known as docs and mechs. Docs are the orcoid medical experts who have a rough and ready knowledge of orcoid xenological composition. Due to their hardiness of orcoid physiology, orc surgical and medical techniques are as crude but effective as the rest of their technology. Wounds can be easily stitched tight with wire or stapled while broken bones need little in the way of setting to speed the healing process. Internal injuries are similarly treated, and the multitude redundancies of many orc organs also provides plenty of transplant donors for those in need of such measures, although the donation is not always made voluntarily, particularly where the casualty is an important member of society. Orcs are generally loath to undergo medical treatment. This is for two reasons. Firstly, many orcs consider such an activity as a sign of weakness, and there are strong compulsions throughout orc society for natural selection to take its course. The weak must die out so that the spores of the stronger may thrive and grow into stronger orcs. Secondly, the gene determination of docs imbues them with a highly active curiosity, coupled with a callous disregard for the well-being of those they treat. Many docs see surgery and treatment as a means for experimentation upon their patients, and often orcs undergo horrendous and entirely unnecessary surgical procedures 
to satisfy the doc's inquisitiveness or as a trial for a new procedure of prosthetics. Such treatments are not tested in any scientific manner before their employment and horribly disabling injuries can result from such procedures. Mechs are similarly driven to experimentation, although in the field of mechanical rather than medical science. Much of the weaponry and war gear used by the orcs, as well as more mundane artifacts, are designed and built by the mechs. As much of their knowledge is subconscious, the vast majority of the mechs never truly understand what they are creating, or the exact function of how they work. As orcs are poor rationalists, they can lead to rather unlikely conventions. For example, it is widely believed by the orcs that machines painted in a red color operate faster. This could have come about by the following situations. A mech builds two vehicles, which as far as it is aware of, are exactly the same except for the fact that one is painted red and the other yellow. However, due to some unseen variation in fuel, lubrication, or some other factor, the red vehicle in fact travels faster. To the orc, the only conceivable explanation for this is that the vehicle travels faster because it is red. However, as disturbing as it sounds, these facts become true. Red orc vehicles do travel perceptibly faster than those of other colors, even when all other design aspects are nominally the same. Similarly, many captured orc weapons and items of equipment should not work, and indeed do not work unless wielded by an orc. It is believed this is linked to the strong psychic aura surrounding all orcoids, and has developed the Anzonian theorem of orcoid mechamorphic resonant kinetics. It is theorized that many orc inventions work because the orcs themselves think that they should work. The strong telekinetic abilities of the orcs subconscious somehow ensures that the machinery or weaponry functions as desired. As astounding as it may be, we cannot make any other conclusions based on the evidence so far. And those were 40 facts on the orc and mech cast of the orcoid culture. Now, um, the mech, the doc, and the actual weird boy are all odd boys. So, they're the most prevalent odd boys in orc culture. Um, we've talked about this in other videos, uh, but you'll find that if you check out our 40 facts on the Freebooter clan, um, there are certain orcs that are born with certain innate abilities that don't fit in with the mech, doc, or the uh, weird boy cast. Um, there are boys that just enjoy communicating with other alien races, even though it means just stealing from them. Um, but those don't really fit in within these casts. So what happens to them is they actually get um, cast off by just orc culture because they don't fit in to the, the three main casts or four main casts because you always have the just regular... Um, you know, leader or the war boss type of cast, um, which the knobs are part of. Um, but there are all these individual smaller subgroups or subclasses uh, in the Orcoid society, and you can learn more about them if you check our 40 facts on the Freebooters, like I said, and um, because the Freebooter cast is really just a throwaway cast. So if any Orc clan or if any Orc does not fit in a clan or a cast, it basically becomes a freebooter. Uh, more explanation on that in that video. And another thing I want to mention, most imperial information on the orc culture, specifically when it comes to the orc weaponry and vehicles, is that uh, once a human uh, tries to use a orc um, machine, it doesn't work. That's not always true. The orc headhunters of Armageddon, they actually have participated or they have actually fought orcs for so long and have come to understand the orc culture so much that they themselves can use shootas, uh, sluggas, weapons that the orcs drop during their fighting and then they can use those weapons against the orcs. Uh, it's something that can't be done by, by everyone but it is something to note. Um, because there has to be something within being around orcs and kind of adopting their mentality so much so that you can possess that weapon or now you could use that weapon um, against your foe. Uh, this 
like my theory is that the orcs can use this weapon because of a psychic connection to the weapon and when humans um, start to understand or t start to be around orc culture they kind of adopt that culture it's kind of like you if you are from another country and then you um, move over to um, a different country after a while your mentality starts to morph into a combination of your past culture and this new culture um, same thing with humans i think as humans fight orcs their old, old imperial culture meshes with the orc culture of just aggression and assault and that um, translates into some psychic energy inside their mind that allows them to use these weapons uh, which means that like orc wall tech or, or orc wall energy or orc energy um, is not something that's a hundred percent exclusive to the orcs it's something that other races can tap into just the same as like an eldar or a human psyker can tap into the same warp energy um, so it's all part of the same uh, warp energy kind of um, pool i guess you could say another example of this situation happening was um, in the game Gorka Morka there were actual um, imperial citizens who crash landed on the planet and um, they basically well they couldn't escape the planet so they started to morph into orc like uh, beings much like Ogrens but it was because of their um, imitation of orc culture um, and orc hierarchy that they were able to also use sluggas, shootas, and things like that. So there has to be some type of like specific wa energy, but it's a a, a wa energy that other uh, psychers can utilize. Uh, or you don't even have to have a, a huge um, psychic presence as long as as long as you have some psych psychic presence. Um, I feel that the orc weapon can be used by someone who has adopted that ideology. But again, those are my thoughts. Comment down what you think of the orc um, just natural ability to create weapons and to use weapons. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you enjoy our content. Uh, it really helps out the channel and it helps us create more videos for you guys if you share this on Facebook, Twitter, uh, or with your friends on forums. Um, thank you so much for um, all that you guys do and thank you so much for the suggestions that you guys put down in the comments below. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh,